Mm -hmm. So, today, we're going to attempt to land a second time the spaceship on the moon. And then we're going to try and bring it back, and then we're going to go to Minmus. We're going to do all of this in record time. Alright. This could be the last of our videos for a little while, given uh, I'm going to China tomorrow. And the internet in China doesn't work so great. Today's drink of choice, Coke Zero. And today's video brought to you by the fact that my uh, family event in San Diego is actually tomorrow. Not today. I got the scheduling wrong. That's my fault. This is why I need Karen in my life to help me not screw these things up. All right. Are we going too fast again? Are we going to have this problem? And I think we're going to have that problem. I think I screwed this up. Yes, I understand. Yeah, I think today's ship is just not going to space. Well, not going to land on the moon safely. So, I have a trick. Um, what is the... Hold on one second. Uh, KSP debug menu. How do you open the debug menu? Alt F12. So, rather than make you wait through uh, rebuilding the ship and relaunching it, I'm just going to temporarily enable infinite fuel. I want to be able to activate our other engines. That will allow us uh, to stop very quickly. Normally we wouldn't be able to do this because we ran out of fuel during takeoff. but. Uh, We'll just use this for landing, and we'll use the normal engines for takeoff. All right, so we'll get to uh, maybe about a thousand meters over the ground. Yeah, see so now we stop way faster. See, fifty, forty, thirty. There we go. Now we can resume using only the very weak engines. We're still 300 meters over the ground. 320, 310. We'll just do this. We'll hold it just like this. Nice and smooth. Turn on the brakes. And just at the last minute, we'll pitch forward so we land on our landing gear. 220, 210. Actually, I want to slow down a little bit. 150, 140, 130. 120. We can land at 5 meters per second, that's okay. Alright, let's pitch forward a bit. As we land on landing gear. 50 meters, 40 meters, 30 meters. 20, turn off the engines, and touchdown. Ah, we still lost the solar panel. I probably should have brought those in. But, now we're landed. move forward a little bit just to get off that ledge there we go look at that beauty of a ship let's uh, turn off the infinite fuel cheat that we only used for landing don't cheat folks it's kind of awkward with both the mouse let's bring that back in there we go I think we have plenty of electrical charge yeah we're good for a little while on electricity so that's how you land on the moon with some cheating so where are we we are right about there so to take off, we're going to go again sideways. But because there's no atmosphere, we can start going sideways pretty much immediately. The only vertical height we need uh, when taking off from the moon is just enough to clear the mountains. You can orbit at a really, really low altitude simply because there's no air to slow you down. So I need to head due east, which is not this direction. I think I'm actually going. Oh, let's turn around that way so we don't fall into a crater. A little bit of fuel. I think due east is going to be that way. Now the trick is going to be how do you pitch up? If there's no air, then there's no air. The wings can't pull you up. So the way we do that is uh, we use the side of a mountain. We're going to build a whole bunch of speed and literally ramp up the mountain. Um, there are other ways to do this involving, you could put thrusters in the bottom of the plane. We actually do have RCS, we might be able to lift the nose up. Um, 
But I think the ramp off the mountain, side of the mountain technique is uh, kind of fun to watch. So we'll give that a try. We'll do a quick save. Uh, can't do a quick save. Now a quick save. All right, there we go. You see, we're already kind of flying a little bit because we're bouncing because it's the moon, right? Oh, but it's really kind of dangerous. All right, we're sort of we bounced up. Let's see if we can get the engines to pitch us up. Up, 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 up. No, don't rotate. No, no, don't hit the ground. Don't hit the ground. That did not work so good. All right. Well, it's a video game. We can try again. Let's try again. We might need the, the fuel sheet again to get uh, enough speed um, in the vertical direction in order to take off. Let's uh, see how we go, though. All right, so let's try this again. Ay, 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 ay. This is what it's like with very low gravity and uh, no air. Right? Your spaceship kind of just bounces. All right, so we're going to ramp up that mountain. So let's just sort of let the plane fall into the crater, and as we come up out the other side of the crater, we'll kick on the engines and uh, see if we can just launch vertically straight up on that cliff over there. And hopefully that can get us pointed roughly in the direction we're trying to go. Alright, let's give this a shot. So we're going to point that way, and we're going to try and launch up this mountain right here. Alright. If we're going like 40 or 50 meters per second, I think that'll be fast enough. 35, 40. Alright, we're pointing in the right direction. I think we got it. Eh, boy, and a boy. A bonnie, a beauty, and a joy forever. We are flying on the moon. Now we just need to avoid falling into the mountains. And I think we are traveling in the correct direction. We just need to go higher, faster. Please don't hit the mountain. 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 Go up, go up, go up. Oh, you're going to hit the mountain. Ah, oh, shite. See, this is why NASA has scientists that plan these things in advance. That's planning is, is good. All right, so we're going to try this again. We'll again try and we'll just scoot down the mountain here. Down the mountain, here she comes. She'll be coming down the mountain, here she comes. You're probably too young to get that reference. We'll be coming down the mountain. We come down the mountain. All right. Try this a second time. So we know we're pointing in the right direction. That's good. I know how to read the compass. That's it's good to confirm that. All right. We're going to turn to the right and kick on the engines. Oh, boy. Here we go. Now, the thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to pitch up more. So you'll notice I sort of leveled out a little bit last time we tried this. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. All right. So we're going to try and hit wheels first here. Good. All right now, just pitch up, pitch up, pitch up. Up, 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 up. Enable RCS. Yeah, RCS will help. All right. Rotate the spacecraft. Point up. Point up. Really, don't hit the moon. Don't hit the surface again. That'd be really embarrassing to hit it again. All right. I think we're going up enough. Although there's still another mountain over there, so I'm still a little nervous. These engines are really weak. How much RCS fuel do I have? Not much. So this is... See these little jets out the side? That's called an RCS, or they're called Reaction Control Thrusters, or Reaction Control System. They, they spurt tiny bits of fuel to help orient the spacecraft. Um, and this ship just doesn't happen to have all that much, right? So now that we're very clear of the mountains, we're going to start to go sideways faster point sideways to hopefully not uh, crash into the mountains again. Alright, so we're going roughly the right direction. Now we just need to build up speed. Alright, what is our app website? I can't... All my controls are sort of hidden today. 7,000. Alright. And hopefully we got the audio right. I'm still playing with the setup, trying to figure everything out. I think I have the audio correct today. Um, but what I don't have correct is this overhead. You see the, the letters, are, the yellow numbers are all on top of other things. All right. So our app is at 8,000, which I think is high enough, but we are not going sideways nearly fast enough. So let's uh, speed things up a little bit. All right. Oh, can we get them landing gear? Not that it matters because space. Um, we could even 
raise the air brakes. Doesn't matter. We're in space. All right. Now we're starting to pick up a little bit of speed. Don't have all that much fuel left, but that might be okay. I'll explain why in just a moment. There we go. We're starting to get there. So I'm trying to get the... Uh, so this is my prograde marker. This is the current direction of my velocity, which this is the direction my ship is pointed. And so you'll see they're different. The ship is actually going to the right of where I'm actually pointed right now. All right, so I think that change in camera means that we're in space. Let's see. Yep, looks like we have successfully orbited the moon. Excelente. Now the good news is that getting back from the moon doesn't require all that much extra fuel or delta V because all we need to do is slow down our orbit. So think we're orbiting in a circle around the moon, but we're actually not only orbiting the circle, we're actually moving around Kerbin at the same time. The moon is orbiting Kerbin just like we're orbiting the moon. It's going sideways so fast the planet can't pull it in. So all we need to do is slow down uh, our velocity from the perspective of orbiting Kerbin a little bit, and you'll see our orbit already dips down quite a lot. Um, so this was our orbit. By expending a little bit of fuel, we start to fall down. Um, and so if we adjust our trajectory just like that a bit, do, 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 do. we should be able to come very close to Kerbin's atmosphere. And if we get close to the atmosphere of the planet, then we can... I should probably do it this way. That's probably smarter. Then we can use the atmosphere of the planet to help uh, slow us down even further and bring us back to the Kerbal Space Center. All right, so now 600, 300... Oops, maybe that's too much. I think that was too much. Let's try again. Oh, because we passed it. That's okay. We can do it on the next orbit. Nope. There we go. All right. So 400 is too much. 300. Just very small changes in the amount of fuel that we use here. It ends up having a big impact on the orbit further down. There's a trade-off. The further ahead of time you make your maneuver, the more effect the maneuver has. Um, so if you make the maneuver, make, if you want to change your velocity at the very last minute, it's very expensive in terms of fuel. Whereas if you make your change way, way, way in advance, you don't have to use all that much fuel. However, you have to be very precise because every little bit of extra movement ends up with a lot of uh, a big impact on the other side. So if you're trying to be precise, and just skim the atmosphere within a kilometer or two, then you need to be very precise with your maneuver. So this is a one minute and 34 second burn. It's gonna take place in 55 minutes. So we will come all the way around the planet again, sorry, the moon again, and then we will try and be as precise as we can with this burn. And it's considered by people that play Kerbal Space Program a skill a highly desirable skill to be able to return from orbiting another planet or body and actually land at the Kerbal Space Center on the runway that we took off from. And so I'm not, I have done that successfully a number of times. Uh, it is obviously a difficult thing to do, uh, but I will attempt it here and we'll see how close we get. Uh, given how tight we are on fuel, uh -huh, we have some liquid fuel left. Remember, once we're in the atmosphere, we can use the oxygen of the air to power our normal jet engines, uh, our normal airplane engines. And so those engines, even with a little bit of fuel, can actually run for quite a few minutes. So all we need to do is get close to the space center and then we can literally just fly uh, back to the runway. So we'll see how we do. Uh, this particular spacecraft is okay uh, at flying on re-entry. It's, it's fairly controllable. So we'll see how good we do. All right, so I'm just trying to get a little closer to the time when we need to execute our maneuver. All right, so let's reorient the craft to point. The blue marker, remember, is the marker of the direction of our maneuver node, which is our planning that we did earlier. All right, so we, after we execute this maneuver, our orbit should be this purple line, which brings us, remember, the atmosphere starts at 70,000, so this will bring us down to about 60. Which is just touching, we might want to bring it down a little bit more after that, uh, maybe to 50 or 40, we'll, 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 we'll see how we do. Um, we're going to be doing another uh, 
burn once we get to the planet to circularize. That way we can plan our landing just at the space center. All right, so let's try and get to about 45 seconds. Two minutes, one minute. All right, 50 seconds. And, all right, go. So you see, from the perspective of the moon, we're speeding up. But we're actually pointed in a direction that's the opposite of the travel the moon. The moon is traveling to the right side of the screen. But you see our spacecraft is actually pointed... Well, you can't see there, but you can see it, the direction on the map. It's pointed in the opposite direction the moon is traveling. So we're actually slowing down from the perspective of our travel around Kerbin. And we don't have to slow down all that much uh, in order to leave the moon's sphere of influence and return all the way to Kerbin. And so I think we've comfortably got plenty of fuel to complete this maneuver, uh, and hopefully enough fuel left over to get uh, to the actual Kerbal Space Center. And we only lost one solar panel and crashed into the surface of the moon about six times. But that's, that's fine, don't worry about that. Planes are free in video games. All right. It's 85, let's speed this up a little bit. There we go. You see our orbit is approaching our planned orbit. Just want to slow down. 1.1 1, 1 million, 1 million, 900,000, 900 kilometers, 800 kilometers, 700, 605. So I'm going to I'm throttle it full right now. I'm going to cut throttle when we get to like 100. And then I'm going to eke it back up and just bump into the atmosphere. All right, so let's slow down. So let's, let's go for... 55, how's that? All right. So, I'll we'll finish that maneuver, we'll save. <laughs> Excellent, let's say name that. Routine, return from moon. Save. All right, now we'll again engage the magic of time warp. We are, so you see, the moon is continuing to the travel to the right. However, our spacecraft is now, it's still traveling to the right around Kerbin, but much slower than the moon. So the moon's gonna leave us behind and we, because we're no longer traveling fast enough sideways, are going to fall towards the planet. See? There we go. And now we say goodbye to the moon. We can actually... We might still be able to see it. Where's where's the moon? Mm, so there's... Where's Kerbin? Where is the planet Kerbin? There's... Wait. That's the moon, which we can say goodbye to. And the Kerbin should be over here. Is it in the dark? We have some sort of eclipse? There she is. Just got a little disoriented. All right, so now we're falling that way, and we're saying goodbye to... I lose the moon again. All right, we'll just watch ourselves come closer to Kerbin. Now we fall towards planet. And it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. 7,000 kilometers, 6,000 6, kilometers, 5,000 kilometers, 4, 3. As we get close, we'll slow down a little bit show you what the map view looks like. So we've left the moon behind there. And now we're getting uh, close to our approach. We orient our spacecraft a little bit. Are we out of electricity? That would be bad. Let's turn on, where's that solar panel? The one we have left. There she is. Let's extend that please. Yeah, okay, thankfully that works. We were out of electricity for a moment. There we go, and now we are gaining electricity once again, and now the spaceship will rotate. So you'll notice the spaceship is rotating. We're not using the RCS reaction control system we talked about earlier. So what is it using? How is the spaceship rotating if we're not ejecting the propellant, right? Newton's first law, every action is an equal opposite reaction. And so in order to move a plane, you eject fuel in a certain direction, and the plane moves in the opposite direction, right? However, clearly we're not using any fuel, so how is the plane able to turn? So it has what's called a... Uh, reaction wheel system. Uh, if you ever picked up uh, like a gy you know a, 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 how a gyroscope works. So if you pick up a bicycle tire and you you hold it uh, by its some spokes um, like a like a BMX wheel or something, and you spin it in this direction and it's spinning, and you try and rotate it, you'll notice it, it fights the, the the change in its rotation. It's because of a, a law called the conservation of rotational uh, inertia. Um, and so a rotating body in one plane wants to stay rotating in that plane. And so this has what's called a reaction control system, which is basically a system of gyroscopes. 
And if you speed up, and I think there's three of them, one in each axis, um, and if you, try, if you change the velocity of these spinning objects, it's going to impart torque on the thing which is changing that velocity. Uh, and so it's very small force, which is why the plane moves very slowly. But it does allow you to make some changes to the orientation of your craft uh, without actually using any fuel. Which can be, and we do use similar things uh, in real life, actually. Um, there are reaction, uh, reaction, control, reaction wheels um, or gyroscopic wheels um, in spacecraft today. And they do use those because every extra ounce of fuel you add uh, makes your spacecraft more expensive and harder to get to space. All right, so now we're getting close to the planet. We're going to have to bring our panel back in, lest it be destroyed by the atmosphere. And let's see. So our goal right now is to sort of circularize our orbit, which means we need to slow down. So we're going to hit the atmosphere, and that's going to bring our apoaps from about 10,000 kilometers, hopefully down quite a bit. So let's let ourselves get into the atmosphere. And now hopefully uh, we start to slow down. So to assist in the slowing down, I'm going to activate the air brakes, and I'm going to pancake the ship. So I'm going to have us enter the atmosphere facing sideways. That way the entire underside of the ship ends up hitting the air. That way we get the maximum amount of drag and the maximum amount of slowing down as part of this process. All right, so you see our speed is in fact slowing down. Things are starting to heat up because we're going pretty quick. We might be going too fast. We might be going to explode. We might have gone too deep in the atmosphere. Maybe 58 was safer. Let's see. Oh boy. Oh boy. 56. Come on, start to pick up. Oh no, I've lost control. I cannot push the point. We're going to flip around. Okay, that's fine. Let's flip around. 55. Are you going to start to pick up yet? But the engines take some of the heat. Alright, good. We're starting to come back up. Whew. That was a bit risky. <laughs> Maybe we did a little too much there. It's actually a common technique in the game to roll your spacecraft during aero braking to distribute the heat evenly. And so I'm just I'm being a professional Kerbal Space Program player, and we're rotating the craft. That was intentional. I meant to rotate it like that. Um, and you can see we've gone from 10,000 kilometers down to 3,600 or so, which is good. Uh, although it does, I do think that means we will have to do this again, 3,400. But maybe we do it at a slightly higher altitude. All right. So that was successful. So let's time warp to here. Let's come around. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to point the ship forwards to raise our what's called periapsis, which is the lowest point of orbit. So let's bring it from 55 to like 59, just because that was a little bit dicey in terms of heating. 56, 57, 58. I'm still a little rusty at the game. I don't quite remember all of the uh, how deep to go into the atmosphere and all that kind of stuff. All right, we'll warp here, come in towards the planet again. Whee! So we're doing this for a second. So we're going to air break again. This is all the save fuel. What we could do when we got to um, Kerbin is just use fuel to slow ourselves down. Uh, but this saves us quite a bit of fuel. Um, and again, we are out of electrical charge, which we could fix, hopefully, by extending our solar panels. I don't know why the planet's freaking out like that. It's kind of funny. All right, and now that we have electricity, again, the, the, the spaceship starts to rotate, which is excellent. Point in the right direction. Good. All right, and let's do re-entry part two. All right, and again, well, this time we'll retract the panel so we don't lose it. Now 
again, we'll pancake. We want to slow down as much as we can without overheating. So we're at 33.3300 kilometers. There we go. Now we're starting to slow down. A little bit of heat. That's fine. Not too much, I hope. All right, stay pancaked. Please stay pancaked. Please. It just wants to rotate. Whatever. We let it rotate. All right, let's try and rotate the ship and actually uh, we'll use the engines a little bit to slow us down. So I'm not, I want to slow down faster at this point. We need to lose like another 300 meters per second. And as you can see, we're losing speed, but not as fast as we like. kick on the engines a bit. We've got 1,200 units of fuel left. I think I'm comfortable using like 150 of those units. We'll save 1,000 units for in the atmosphere. And we're bringing our orbit down. Theomon Kerbin and Isatina Kerbin are uh, having a good time. Uh, show engineer, there we go. Oh, I've used a little more fuel than I wanted to. Whatever. Alright, so we brought our orbit down a bunch. Still not quite as much as, like, alright, let's do one more air break. Because, uh,. Do you think we need to slow down? All right, so let's bring it instead of 55. Let's uh, lower that 57. Let's lower that to let's go back to 55 again. Maybe 54. I think we've slowed down enough. 56, 54, eh, 53. Let's try that. And again, we're gonna have the issue with the solar panels. So we'll extend that. Flying in space is very exciting sometimes. Alright, and again we'll come towards the planet. And again we retract the solar panel. Retract the solar panel. Alright. And we're in the atmosphere again. Let's do the whole pancaking thing so we slow down even more. Yeah, I think we do need to lose more than 100. Uh, couple hundred more meters per second, so I don't want to use any more fuel, I want to save it. And just let the ship rotate. Alright, stay right there, stay right there, stay, 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 stay. Good, alright. Pancake the atmosphere, just like that. Uh, I think we're going to start slowing down quite a bit coming up. I do not believe when NASA came back from the moon, they did this multiple error breaking thing. I believe they just went straight into the atmosphere and they had a really thick heat shield, very small craft, and they just sort of manned up and did it. But our spacecraft's a little bit more delicate, doesn't have thick heat shields. I want to try to slow it down a little bit at a time. There we go, slow it down faster, come on, you can do it. Good. We're under a thousand kilometers. 940, 930, 920, 900. If we can get this to like 200, then I think we can plan our uh, Kerbal Space Center re-entry. I think that's KSC over there, actually. We also notice our orbit's on a little bit of an incline. We'll have to fix that. Uh, that's the Kerbal Space Center. Set that as our target. Probably should have fixed the inclination earlier when we had a highly eccentric orbit. It would have cost less fuel. 
This is good. 700. Ah, let's speed this up a bit. 600. Yeah, we're still going 200 or 300 meters per second faster. And like, so we might have to do this one more time. All right, so let's first fix our inclination. That way it's easy to get to the Kerbal Space Center. I'm right here. I'm going to burn down a little bit. Two degrees. How much fuel is that? A lot. Ugh. One degree. I'm getting a little nervous on fuel. 1.3 degrees. That's good enough. Point to maneuver. Take out our solar panel again. Do, 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 do. So we could just land at this point. However, uh, we're trying to be fancy and land at the Kerbal Space Center. So I don't think we need another aero break. I think we're probably good. The Kerbal Space Center is, is located on the equator, right? So we want to be orbiting the planet on the equator. That way we can choose our landing spot relatively easily. And this is all fuel that we could be using to help us land. Oh, I'm starting to get very nervous about fuel. Alright, that's probably good enough. Quick save here. And uh, alright, so where's the KSC? Alright, so the Kerbal Space Center is about to go into night time. I'd like to land during the day. That way we can actually see the runway. So what we'll do is we'll use our next orbit to again uh, do a little bit of air braking. Let's bring it down to like 58 or so. We're at 63. good enough. Point forwards and let's go into the atmosphere. One more time. And I believe after this next air break the Kerbal Space Center should be just about during daylight which should give us the opportunity to plan our descent. We'll actually have to plan something and uh, hopefully land near the runway. Again we have to bring in the solar panel. All right. One last air break. See how we do. All right, slowing down. So more, the more slowing down we do here, the less slowing down we have to do when we do our actual entry into the atmosphere. What happens right now is we're sort of entering just the top of the atmosphere, slowing down a little bit, and sort of skimming right off the top. When we actually come into the atmosphere, then we're going to hit the deep, thick air, and the slower we hit the thick air, the uh, higher the probability that we don't burn up <laughs> and we actually survive. All right, so we've done a reasonably good job of air braking at this point, and the spaceship wants to flip around. That's so. What that probably indicates is that our weight balance is not correct. So we need to move as much weight as we can to the front of the ship. So a little bit of fuel there. Now we need to find the rest of the fuel. So there's a little bit of fuel there. So I'm now going to engage in fuel transfer and just move as much fuel as I can to the forwardmost um, of our fuel tanks. Keep that one pinned. Let that one go. Uh, transfer in. I'm going to move all the fuel that's left into this front fuel tank. Just try and get as much of the weight of the craft forward. I know there's very small amounts of fuel in these tanks, but every little bit helps balance the craft. Remember, it's all about that center of mass and center of lift. In a normal airplane, you have fuel in the body of the plane and fuel in the wings. And so what in a real like commercial aircraft, what actually happens is there's pumps. And as the, the aircraft consumes fuel, fuel is pumped around the ship to balance out the ship's center of mass. 
And this is this is a real real life airplanes do this today. So there's 652 in this front fuel tank. It's 694. So we're missing 42 units of fuel somewhere. I thought I checked every fuel tank. There's not that many tanks on this ship. There's some. All right. All right. Now all of our fuel is in the forward mode fuel tank. Hopefully our center of gravity is as far forward as possible. Because once you're flying, you can't change your center of lift. But you can change your center of mass by moving fuel around. And so that's what we do. All right, so the Kerbal Space Center is over here. No, it's not. There's the Space Center. Again, going into nighttime. Mm, all right, so we'll have to do an extra orbit to wait until it comes to daytime. So I must have... Uh, planet's moving slower than I expected. That's right, so what we're going to do here is we'll lift up our periapsis just a bit so that way we don't air brake too much. And we're out of electric charge again because the ship is not rotating. Hopefully this is the last time we have to do the solar panel game. All right, We've got electricity. You might ask, how can you extend the solar panel without electricity to begin with? And the answer to your question is I have no idea. I think it's the game just being nice to me. Let's uh, stop. All right. Now we're just going to circle the planet until the space center is in the daytime, and we are positioned appropriately to try and land on top of it. So we're just going to keep going in circles for another minute or two. The space center is over here, so it's still in the middle of nighttime. So waiting for it to come around. The game only lets you time warp so fast depending on your altitude. So the lower we go, the slower we time warp. But once we go a little higher, then uh, we can go faster. So it's almost midnight for the KSC Kerbal Space Center. It's actually a coincidental acronym. It's the same as Kennedy Space Center, where NASA launched many missions from. Oh, look, we have a rendezvous with some other satellites. Maybe we can steal some fuel for these. We're getting pretty close to those guys. All right, coming around again. So it's almost dawn at the Space Center. So I think on our next orbit, hopefully, the KSC will be in daytime. Mm, let's do one more time just to make sure it's during the day, really during the day. That way, the whole reentry happens during the day, and uh, none, none of it's at nighttime. One more time around. One last time. Do, 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 do. All right. Definitely daytime for the Space Center. So the way this works is you want to perform your retrograde burn um, when you are roughly on the opposite side of the planet from the Space Center. Um, and now, actually, the lower we are, um, if I were to do the burn from here, for example, I'd actually have to burn quite a bit to bring this down. I just don't have that much fuel. So I'm actually going to wait for the Kerbal Space Center to go even lower, closer to our current periapsis. <laughs> that way, I don't have to consume too much fuel, actually, to do our re-entry burn. Uh, because I genuinely would like to have a little bit of fuel for the landing. This might even do... So if I burn now... I want one more. Alright, definitely this time. We should be good. So right around here is probably where we'll plant it. Should be okay. Going still a little fast, so we'll have a shallow entry. All right. So, right around here, we'll quick save. We'll plan a maneuver right around there. 50 meters per second. That brings us our periapsis to 11,000. That's too much. Probably want 30 or so. And we'll probably want to do this. I'm almost worried we need one more rotation around the planet. Let's quick save, do one more rotation around, and we'll try again. Yeah, now I feel better about this. Now I think we're lined up. Periapsis is 30. All right, so let's perform this maneuver. 
six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, to point in the direction of the maneuver. Probably need to extend our solar panels again. Oh, nope, it's already out. Excellent. All right, point in the right direction. This is, I think, our last usage of fuel in space. We'll re enter with 600 or so units left. 50,000, 40,000, 30,000. That should. I think it's going to be an, an aggressive re entry. We'll see how we do. All right. Now let's point forwards. Bring in a solar panel for the last time. Now we'll bring it in when we get close to the atmosphere. All right. Bring in the solar panels. Bring out the air brakes. Let's rotate the spaceship so it's pointed roughly the same direction. There we go. All right. Fingers crossed. This is the risky element. Right, let's do a quick save. The entry. Let's see if we can hit Purple Space Center. Land on the runway like we're professionals. All right. Here goes nothing. So again, remember, we did our burn such that on our traditional trajectory, with the exception, you know, discounting air braking, we're going to come down to 30,000. So we know we're going down to at least 30,000. But what's going to happen is we're going to go lower than 30,000 because we're going to be slowing down the whole way. So at this point, heat management is actually a big deal because we're still going 2,500 meters per second, which is very fast. And you'll notice this time our speed's actually increasing because we're still falling towards the planet very quickly. So soon, though, the amount of air we're hitting should start to slow us down faster than the fall of gravity pulls us in. And uh, we need to get under about 1,500 meters per second in a hurry. So we are here. The space center's... Oh, no. We are coming way too soon. All right, so I'm going to level out so we slow down slower, turn off the air brakes, because we actually have to travel quite a long ways to get to the space center. And I think we're just gonna burn out. We are way too aggressive on entry, way too aggressive. However, now that the plane is sort of pointed down, the wings are actually generating lift. So we might actually be able to raise our periapsis a little bit and try and pull up. This way we don't go quite so deep. Yeah, we are raising our periapsis, but we need to raise it more. We're going too fast. Pull up, pull up. Oh boy, things are getting hot. So the Kerbal Spacer is on the other side of the ocean in front of us. So I'm trying to pull up. Oh, we're losing things. I don't know what we lost, but we lost stuff. Shit's exploding. I think that was a solar panel. We lost a solar panel. All right. We've made our apparatus to about 40, so we're going to level out. We're sort of coast. <laughs> if you can believe this is coasting, this is coasting. We're going to coast like this for a little while. Um, and just sort of cross the ocean. And once we've crossed the ocean, we'll dip deeper into the atmosphere, which will slow us down a whole bunch more. And I think the heat situation is under control. Although I really don't want to go any deeper into the atmosphere, lest uh, the heat become too big an issue. So we are here, and we need to go all the way across the ocean to get to that. So we're going to stay at this altitude for, and speed for as long as we can. I used to have a mod in the game which would show me where the space center is here but it's not here right now so we're doing good i feel confident i feel pretty comfortable all right let's dip down a little more so we're going to start to come up now which i don't want i want to stay right around here So now we're, we're using the wings to actually pull us down a bit. So that the spaceship, because we're going so fast, wants to actually leave the planet. Uh, but I don't want, I want to stay at about this altitude. So I'm actually using the lift of the wings to control whether we're going up or down. As you see, when I point down, the spaceship actually comes down. And our vertical speed indicator, which is over here, goes down. 
But if the spaceship points up, then we go up. And so I'm trying to stay as level as we can to just coast across the ocean until we get to the space center. Assuming we can get to the space center. Alright, let's stay right there. And now we wait. Ooh, we're getting there. So back in the Reagan era, actually, there was a, an idea. So we're going, we're traveling hypersonic right now, which is more than five times the speed of sound. We're going crazy fast. There was an idea to actually build a commercial aircraft, which would be a little bit like the SR-71. It would go really, really high into the atmosphere and go Mach 3, 4, Mach 5, uh, and travel kind of like our plane is traveling right now, and then descend into the atmosphere um, and actually come to a landing. And this way you could go from New York to London in like an hour. That's not good. Shit's blown up. Uh, we're losing solar panels and things like that, so that's okay. I'm not too worried. But now that we're getting close to land, probably need to start thinking about slowing down. So I'm going to pancake a little bit. I'm going to risk turning on the air brakes. Ah. Are the air brakes going to explode? No, not yet. Alright, now we need to start slowing down because the Kerbal Space Center is just on the other side of those mountains. Um, so anyway, so yeah, so Reagan decided he wanted to build one of these, and he put out a uh, request to the military contractors, north of Grumman, Lockheed, uh, Lockheed Johnson, etc. And uh, I almost said Lockheed Martin. It is Lockheed Martin. Yeah, Lockheed Martin. Um, and the folks at Lockheed were like, that's crazy. We built the SR-71, which went Mach 3.5, and that was nuts. That was for a trained military pilot to, to fly in a, a pressurized suit. And you want to go twice as fast, and you want to send civilians and t-shirts? Um, so they said, you're absolutely nuts, Mr. Reagan. Why is it nighttime? No, we're landing at night. Didn't plan this perfectly, so we'll turn on our lights. Um, so now what we need to really do is need to slow down. Really need to start slowing down. We are too high and too fast now. So let's see if we can dip down into the atmosphere. Point down, point down, point down. Go down, go down, go down, point down. Alright, the Space Center is directly below us, 85 kilometers away. We are going way too fast. I'm intentionally sort of letting the, the craft spin and roll a bit to let the wings act as complete air brakes, just like that. There we go, now we're slowing down real fast. Slow down faster, faster, faster. So we're overshooting. This is why we need fuel. <laughs> a little bit of excess fuel hopefully will help us fly back to the Space Center. Slow down faster! There's the runway directly underneath us now. I want to get to you, but you're so far away. All right. Point that way, point that way, point that way. We're just too high in the atmosphere. All right, let's try rotate. Let's try and actually turn. So assuming I can recover from this spin, I'm gonna try and pull a, start turning a circle. Assuming we can recover from the spin. I think turning off the air brakes will help with the aerodynamics a bit. There we go. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. Urgh. How far away are we? Eh, that's kind of far. Definitely don't have enough fuel for that. All right. We overshot. Let's try this again. Where are we? Come in. 30 something thousand. All right. Let's. Um, if we come in a little later. Uh, so if I raise periapsis, uh, yeah, all right, let's do it again. So 
So as a result of Lockheed Martin basically telling President Reagan that he was crazy, um, they, the whole plan basically went kaput. Not, not all that much happened. Uh, so they, they built some prototypes, but ultimately the idea of a hypersonic commercial plane was uh, not pursued with any uh, real effort. All right, so now that we know that we need to coast for a while and then really slow down quickly, I'm going to let the plane glide for a while. But we're going to try and come down faster. So we're going to lose our solar panel again in a second. Yep, there goes the solar panel. Doing this whole thing in time warp now, because uh, you've seen it once already. Uh, although time warp tends to make things unstable. Alright, how are we doing? Long ways to go. So if the whole craft sort of just blows up spontaneously, it's probably because of time warp. So the coast right around here. And we need to come down. For sure. Alright, is that the mountains already? That's the mountains already. Alright. Let's begin our slow the heck down. Definitely need to start slowing down. Slow down more. You can do it. Start falling. Fall faster. We're still coming too high and too fast. Way too high and too fast. We're overshooting again, and we're spinning like crazy. There's the space center. All right, let's see if we can get this under control. All right. This is good. This is good. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. Ah! Stop spinning. Good, good, good. Nope, go that way. to recover from this. All right. Come around one more time. We need to start turning to get back to... There's the runway. We're going much slower this time, though. I think we're about to hopefully get control. There's enough air that we can control the plane. Per grade. Stop spinning! Please stop spinning. Yeah. Well, this is bad. The spinning needs to stop. Okay. Down. Oh, oh, I think we have control. I think I have control. All right. All right. Pull up. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. There's the runway. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. Who's an expert pilot? Oh yeah. We have control of the plane, and we are only 20 kilometers from the runway. Oh baby. Yeah. Now we just need to not crash into the ocean as we pull out a little loop-de-loop. -loop. Oh yeah, I think we got this. We totally got this. Pull up. Oof. All right. I don't. Even, I don't. I don't think we're gonna need the engines at all. I think we could just coast right in. Uh, but I want to turn these engines off. All right. We need to start pulling up. There we go. We have level flight. Engines are enabled. probably have three or four minutes. Let's bring down the landing gear. 
three or four minutes of flight time with the amount of fuel left, which is perfect. I, I, I don't think we need the engines. I'm going to turn them off again. Uh, let's leave them on a little bit. All right. Hopefully I don't screw up the landing. It feels really twitchy. Pull up a bit. Ah, too much. Search loss. That's what I want. Okay, that's what was screwing me up. Alright, coming in too fast. Brakes. Turn, 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 turn. Ah, no, hit the runway. Please hit the runway. Uh, we're going kind of fast. Alright, rotate. Pull up, pull up. Flare, flare. Ah! Oh, come on, Zach. <laughs> I could have totally missed the runway. Uh, I bet the folks in the tower are really enjoying this circus. Now we're coming down, we're coming down. Go to the runway, go to the runway. There we go, touchdown. And, look at that, we are on the runway. That counts, that totally counts. To the moon, and back, and on the runway. You cannot say that doesn't count. Look at that. We got a little curve there. Say hi. Sweet! Oof! Now what we can do is uh, get back on board, turn off the engines, and we can recover the vessel. So when we land on the runway, you actually get most of your money back. So they consider all parts of the game reusable. But of course, you, you don't get your money back for the fuel. All right. That was exciting. We made it back. Um, so that's it for today. Um, I might make another video about uh, getting to Minmus at some point. But I think uh, it's an hour-long video, I think. So... So long for now. Bye.